Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about outsourcing. So let's get into it. So the question in question was posted on a video I made which is called Will programming become an outsourced lowly paid job within 10 years? And the short version of that is that that's already happened in my from my perspective, uh, depending on where you work within IT. If you work at the high-end companies or the, the companies who do serious software development and have an eye for quality, no. If you work anywhere else, uh, you always run that risk, basically. Uh, and so my point being that uh, high-end uh, software development is practically never possible when you outsource. Uh, because simply put, when you bulk something, quality goes down and that's not just with people it's with products it's with everything basically so the person wrote hi Frederick having worked at an outsourcing company as a consultant uh, as a consultant for a product company and as a contractor and a freelancer I can agree with what you said however I would just add that the low quality from outsourcing companies is oftentimes due to the distance and culture difference and not always due to uh, talent what are your thoughts my thoughts are that uh, distance and culture, cultural differences are just other ways of saying that there's a mismatch in uh, talent. Uh, because uh, I will go as far as to say that within IT there is, like, I mean, racism exists everywhere, cultural, cultural differences exist everywhere. Uh, what I'm saying is that IT is among the top level industries within the world. What I mean by that is, is not that you're making the most amount of money or that you don't have issues. What I'm saying is that uh, most other industries are trying to mimic a lot of the practices that are coming from the IT industry because of the fact that for, it's such a young industry, it's, it's a very young field and a lot of the like agile work practices and like all of this stuff, it originates from this industry. Uh, it's the same thing uh, that you see in most of the companies who are now not, you know, they're not purebred IT companies, but they're realizing that they actually do need to have a focus on this because we're getting to a point where IT is eating the world, if in case you haven't noticed. Literally everything. And that's the whole reason why we have all this cyber warfare going on, like all this stuff. IT is eating everything. And uh, very quickly, people are realizing that the if you you may not I mean if you're working as a carpenter in a little town yeah you don't have to be an IT company but if you want to be a major player in the global marketplace you will have to become an IT company very soon and so this culture distance thing uh, sure you can uh, make an argument for that but in my opinion it's the same argument that people are making about you know COVID hitting and now all of a sudden everybody has to work remotely and that's gonna go to shit of course because now you have to now you're not in the same office anymore and I kinda go guys there is nothing whatsoever that indicates that you can't maintain an effective work pra effective work practices and work standards just because you're working remotely this idea that remote workers will do a worse job is completely false because the reality is that uh, the only difference between having a manager in um, being within an office and being remote is that you have to have the trust in case like this is something that I find very interesting because many people don't actually realize that the primary f primary reason you have a manager is to guarantee that the workers are working and to be able to administrate and like deliver like uh, give estimates and explain like with timelines and stuff like that set expectations and so forth but that is the primary reason for that person and there is a very good reason why you don't really need this traditional corporate hierarchy in smaller companies where if you look at companies such as game companies and so forth because the act the, the, the actual work is being done by the people there so if the people are all motivated and have an alignment process where they can output good results the manager is redundant it's completely redundant and the same thing goes for this whole outsourcing thing sure you can make a claim that if you work in two different parts of the world that there might be culture differences that can affect the outcome of the product. A product. But at the end of the day, at least on my experiences, 
IT doesn't have much of an ter in terms of an issue with these traditional things that would have come uh, at the lower end, uh, like uh, at uh, in other regions or uh, in other industries where you might have, as I said, racism or you might have miscommunication, expectations, and so forth. Because IT is it's very universal in comparison to most other industries. I mean, it's as universal as I can imagine it getting. It's the only industry I know that has such an enormous focus on the diversification of the workforce. And that's not just because we're, you know, trying that the IT is trying to be progressive, it's also due to the fact we don't have enough people. So if you want to be able to hire the best talents across the globe, which is the trend in the major IT companies, you're going to have to have an inclusive um, uh, work area or workspace. And the that's the thing that I, I believe. Uh, that's why I say that you can't bulk outsource uh, talent because the fact of the matter is that uh, when you're working with consultancies, it doesn't matter if it's an outsourcing like a company like, because guys, the whole concept outsourcing, it's just another term for oh consultancy. And the only difference is that one consultancy is within uh, your region or it's outside of you know out of abroad or something like that i don't even understand why i mean some people associate outsourcing with i don't know india yes that's one place you can outsource to for for cheaper labor but at the end of the day outsourcing is you know moving things to a consultancy and if you do that because of reasons or if it's just because of money doesn't matter it's the same problem i have interviewed hundreds of people by now a lot of them consultants and the pattern is always the same I do not know who is going to be good and who's going to be bad within a company that's why my comp the, the companies they hire me or like they ask me to do the uh, do the recruitment along with other developers of course that they sort of trust right and the reason is very simple because every consultancy has the same goal and that is to get the most amount of money they can for every developer they have and the problem is as you can imagine imagine this imagine that my company needs to hire me who is a software developer to figure out what a good developer looks like what do you think the consultancies are doing every single consultancy I've ever worked with has the same pattern there are a few people within the entire organization that is worth anything in terms of like high-end development processes and like it actually has real good strong experience everybody else is either a one like you most of them have subpar skills that because as I'm say, as I said like they have gotten in the same way as everybody gets into IT and as I've said before the recruitment process in today's IT world is really really bad most companies so and especially the consultants they have even lower quality standards than anybody else because as I said their focus is not to get the best developers their focus is to get people headcount headcount is everything to them to them because you're they're selling the developers as a product and that's the thing that I argue is the reason why it's always a risk to hire consultancy because at the end of the day all you're doing is that you, it's basically like hiring mercenaries in an army if you are extremely good at screening people and controlling them and you have the right processes on your side and like all that stuff there they can be a ma major asset but no you know quote unquote uh, no sane general would hire would only work with mercenaries it's uh, it's an un, it's a short term uh, good strategy but long term it's not going to work and i don't believe uh, personally i've never seen there being a culture problem it's really it really comes down to the fact that uh, one part one part is that the company has usually middle management and so forth product managers and so forth they are not all that good themselves uh, at delivering on IT products and so forth so they they actually that's one of the re, one of the many reasons why we need really really good dedicated software developers because they are the people who are most capable of making sure that the project stays on track gets delivered has quality and all of this stuff so there's a lot of that's why you need really good software developers and if you hire the best software developers they will bridge the ineptness or incompetency of a lot of other area within a lot of other areas within your IT company but if you hire consultants you have it's a dub, it's a double fault you have you potentially and because um, at the end of the day the manager can be the best manager in the world it doesn't matter if the software developers are not so good and as i said that is a it's true across all 
consultancies. I've never, never, ever, because as I said, at the end of the day, consultancies have a screening process that is even worse than most uh, product companies. So what I want you to take away from this is that no, at least from my perspective, I don't think that outsourcing and the reason why a lot of uh, there's a lot of issues related to outsourcing in terms of product quality and so forth is due to culture differences and distances and stuff like that. Uh, it's really not the thing that dictates whether or not something works. There are plenty of companies who do like all remote or mostly more remote, uh, my own company included, and we can deliver software that is uh, very well working, uh, top notch uh, f uh, in terms of what we are doing within our company, right? Uh, so the reason why I believe that the issue with outsourcing exists is because I believe that uh, when you are hiring consultancies or consultants, uh, you are basically hiring. P you, you you have to understand their perspective. Their focus is not to help you. Their focus is to maximize their profit, and that's all they care about. So if you, as the company, are hiring consultants and you don't have your own people on the inside who are trusted and really established and extremely good at what they do, you're basically hiring mercenaries and you have no way of knowing what they're doing or how good they are and so forth. So that's why I tell people that if you're going to hire anybody, it doesn't matter if it's outsourcing or if it's whatever it is, always have senior staff that you can trust on hand that can evaluate the, recru the new recruits, the candidates, and also if uh, and they should have telemetry, like they should have an insight into all the work that is happening at all times. Because, as I said, you cannot trust the mercenary. It's that simple. Some of them are really good. I mean, I have consultants that I, I really enjoy working with, and they actually convert and then they become employees because they're so dedicated. But that's not the norm. I can tell you a secret. I go through maybe a hundred consultants to find one person that is worth anything. Have a great day.